Borussia Dortmund are in Manchester ahead of their meeting against City tomorrow. Pep Guardiola's side, the favourites in this match, and so many of his players on key form right now, especially Ilkay Gundogan. Here is the City midfielder. And, and uh, we are still in all, all the competitions, and we are playing a good role in every single competition. And um, now we are leaders in the Premier League, and of course, we want to maintain that as, as, as long as possible. And that would mean at the end then also to be to be crowned champions again. And of course, that's a target. But uh, we also know how much uh, effort we have to put in just from the past months, you know, where we, in the months where we won every single game, um, which is, of course, a happy moment for us. But on the other side, also um, an experience that uh, we know why we won every single game, you know? Um, this, that, this is not just something that just happens randomly. This is something that uh, needs, needs a lot of work and effort. So we know what to do, that's a good thing. We know um, how to continue. And uh, it's just about, you know, being um, or maintaining that, um, and not to drop any inch and um, try to do as good as possible also in the next few weeks. So no surprise, City won again at the weekend, extending their nice cushion at the top of the table while resting several players, including Ilkay Gundogan, who we just heard from there. Jimmy, this team just seems unstoppable at the minute, no matter what rotations they make. OK, everybody, let me just state the facts here. Man City have won 26 out of the last 27 games. I'm not talking a 26 game on Beaton Street where they have wins and draws. They've won 26. On top of that, they have seven consecutive clean sheets in the Champions League. I'm no way in any possible thought going against Man City in this one. However, I do think the Borussia Dortmund have an outside chance. And I know that's going to make Ian so happy as he gets drunk on his Bundes uh, Bundesliga <laughs> juice over there. But, 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 and I say this because the last time we saw Borussia Dortmund go into the knockout rounds, they were facing Sevilla. We're like, oh, Dortmund have no chance. And then within 30 minutes, they were up 3-1. It was unbelievable. My only issue with Borussia Dortmund is that they can't do it for 90 minutes. They could be world-class for 30 of those 90 minutes, but not the full 90 minutes. And that's what makes me worried. But with regard to Erling Holland. He is being shopped around right now by his agent and his dad. They're doing a victory tour around Europe to see which <laughs> club wants to buy him, right? And so Holland, I think he's going to be up for it. People want to see how he does against one of the best defenses in the world, against one of the best center backs in the world in Ruben Diaz. And I think he's going to be up for it. I think Borussia Dortmund, whatever their Bundesliga form is, it doesn't matter when it comes, when all everybody's watching uh, with this competition. And, and I think he's going to be up for it. That said, I think City are going to do the business over two legs. I definitely agree with you. I think City is going to do the business. And talking about uh, Dortmund trying, and they've been fantastic in Sevilla. To do that, you have to have the ball. And that's something that uh, Manchester City knows how to put on the side. They do very well to hold the ball, to try to uh, slow down the game. Because they got players to do it. They know how to keep the ball for 45, uh, 30 minutes in a row. If, and you don't touch the ball. And then they create chances. And now they learn how to defend. That's something that Manchester City in the beginning of the season didn't know how to do. So if Erling Haaland, Conan, uh, Sancho, uh, no, Sancho is not going to even play. Forgot about that. Sancho is not going to even play a massive uh, Gio Reyna. They try to do something. They need to have the ball. And with the press that Manchester City does in the center of the field, is very, very difficult. So I think for this uh, game, it's a total clear favor to Manchester City because they can control the whole game in every single phase of it. And at the front, who is going to play? I mean, they got massive, amazing players up front and they can't rotate. If this one is not working, I'll replace it with another even better. And uh, yeah, there's no way that this Dortmund can manage to maybe uh, go through. But in the first game, maybe score a goal and see what happens in the second one. City is going to go through for sure. The beauty of this game is the fact that there is a massive underdog in this competition and I'm drinking my Bundesliga Kool-Aid right now, Jimmy Conrad, <laughs> and I hope it's okay. I'm trying to make an argument for Borussia Dortmund. I think they can win over 90 minutes. I disagree with you, Jimmy. I think in one game, Borussia Dortmund can beat Manchester City, but they have to be at their very best. Erling Haaland has to be next level. He has to take every opportunity that comes his way, and he's the key. He's the difference maker, right? As you mentioned, he wants to prove to the whole world that he's worth this massive price tag, and he's worth all of the recognition, the headlines that he is getting right now from his agent and from his father doing this victory tour, as you mentioned. 14 games in the Champions League, 20 goals. I mean, that's incredible. Seems to enjoy playing in the Champions League. 49 goals in 50 Borussia Dortmund appearances. 
is outstanding. I mean, this guy knows how to score goals. I was really disappointed with him in the international break. I was really disappointed with him at the weekend in the loss against Eintracht Frankfurt. And I was disappointed in some of the body language from the players around him. Marco Reus, for example, the leader, the captain, not anywhere near his best form. So an out of form Borussia Dortmund are absolutely nowhere near in this tie. But for 90 minutes, if they switch on, they have a chance because they're dangerous in front of goal. I worry about their defense. Manchester City over the two ties will go through. And I think Pep Guardiola does achieve that semi-final spot. They're too good. They're far too deep in quality with the squad that they have. They're in form. And how great was that interview right there from Gundogan? The way he's playing right now, the goals he's scoring, double figures for the first time in a long time, and it might even be the first time in his career domestically, and 16 goals all competitions. It's fabulous to watch. I think City are too strong over the two ties, but I'd love to see Dortmund make it interesting. It could be 3-0, 3-0, Manchester City. But I'd like to see City at least give us something to look forward to in that second game. Well, things looking very good for City at the minute. But some of the biggest news out of Manchester has been Sergio Aguero's contract will not be renewed at the end of the season. I mean, a player that's not really had the consistency this season, but he is their all-time top goal scorer. He's won 10 titles at City. Luis, were you surprised at the news or is now a good time for these changes to be made? Well, he, he, he has to arrive at the point that Sergio Aguero has to leave at, 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 to some other places to try to find another uh, challenge. Uh, I met him when he was 21. He was a fantastic player. We thought that he will become even a, a better player, but probably we never thought that we, he will achieve what he has done in Manchester City. He kind of uh, uh, broke all the all the records. He was fantastic every single time. And at the end, because of uh, his physicality, he's a, a very... Um, specific um, uh, person in, in his, uh, his body and you have to control very well and well at the end of his career you know that you're going to have to manage it probably he's desperate to get involved more often but uh, injuries during the whole season hasn't been helping him to to prove that he's a, a fantastic player during the whole season so at the end it was a matter of time he's going to move on any single team that is going to have him in the next couple three years is going to be very lucky because definitely he's one of the top scorers in Europe yeah, and I think that team's going to be Atletico Madrid, Lucho, because they seem to take back their old strikers. We got Fernando Torres went back after a stint there. Diego Costa, Alvaro Morata. Why not bring back Sergio Aguero? They need somebody like him. I know they have a younger version, we could argue, and Joao Felix, but his ex experience, maybe partnering with Luis Suarez, would be pretty exciting. And Leti are on the ropes right now, holding on to their hopes barely for the La Liga title. That's a different conversation for another time. But yeah, Sergio Aguero, an absolute legend of the club, one of the best to ever do it in the Premier League. I don't think he gets the respect he deserves, but hopefully with some time passing, he'll finally get that respect. Aguero! I mean, it was just one of the greatest moments in Premier League history. Hearing that call, it, it, it hurt my soul because I'm a United fan. But wow, I mean, what a moment that was in his career and what a career he has had at Manchester City. Outstanding. Um, I, I'm glad that we're talking about him because of it being such a difficult year for him and difficult couple of years trying to keep consistently healthy. But he is just has been fabulous for Manchester City. My opinion now on who replaces him is really up for debate. Pep Guardiola came out in his press conference this week and said that this, the club is not going to spend 100 plus million on new players. How do you replace an Aguero? Jesus is not that guy. Foden's not that guy. I don't care who you've got at Manchester City right now. They don't have that guy within the club. So they're going to have to bring in a striker who can replace that type of goal scoring action. And I know there's goals spread around, but imagine the Premier League is going to get stronger with Liverpool, United, and obviously the other teams in the Premier League will get better. So City are going to have to continue to try get better. So they have to try and find a replacement. I want it to be Haaland. But how, how does Haaland convince Manchester City he's worth spending 150 million euro, which is quoted from our Fabrizio Romano as the price tag to get him? How do you get City to convince to spend that type of money? They have it, and I don't care what Pep says. They have the money. You score goals against them. You turn it on. And that's why I say watch out for Erling Haaland, because I think he's a big time player on the big stage. And if he wants to prove it, there's the stage. So who replaces Aguero and will this year finally be the year for Pep Guardiola and Manchester City? They're on perfect form coming into the final stages of this competition.